we are getting down to the nitty gritty. And for a few teams, it is about to get pretty shitty. There is a battle for the home run title and maybe even the triple crown. It was an exciting month. We'll show you how it all went down. So get ready for the show that tells you everything you need to know on this month in Wiffle Ball. The Diamondbacks have outhit every team, outscored every team, and outpitched all but two teams. That has been their recipe for winning games, and they win those games in dramatic fashion. With a 12-2 record, there is no doubt the first place D-backs are the class of the Palisades so far this season. But the way they have won puts them in a class all their own. In 14 games this season, the D-backs have scored 104 runs, and 54 of those runs have been scored in the final inning. Keeping it close and ending it with a deadly strike has been a formula that has worked for the D-backs. Week 8, they will put it to the test when they face a team that doesn't like to keep it close. If you had Whiffman and Kenny Rogers Jr. on your fantasy Whiffle Ball team, you would have cleaned up this season. The Blue Jays' dynamic duel has already reached double digits in home runs and has driven in more runs than all the two teams. Whiffman sits just one home run behind the D-backs' Kenny Stengel with 12, but leads all in hits and average by a wide margin. Rogers is having a ridiculous rookie year, batting over 400 with 10 home runs and 28 RBI. But it is another player that has made all the difference for the Jays. Oliver Avalone came into the league in 2013 as a 15-year-old project. There were flashes over his first two seasons, but it has all come together in 2015. Through five starts, Avalone is pitching to a 1.52 ERA, with a 5-1 record and 76 strikeouts. Able to shut down opponents, and with a whole lot of run support, Avalone has been able to pitch free and easy, and may end up in the Cy Young conversation before too long. You can't talk about the Cy Young Award without mentioning the Braves. Tim Trenary in a down year is still pitching to a 0.82 earned run average. Tim McElrath is having the best year of his career. At 7-0, no one has a better record than McElrath. Allowing less than a run a game, McElrath has done everything he can to keep the Braves atop the standing. At the plate, the Braves are in the middle of the pack, but everyone on the team is capable of winning a game with their bat. If Dave Fisher can continue to hit in the high 300s, and Trenary, Lanks, and McElrath can continue to hit balls out of the park, there is no reason to think they won't get a bye. That is, if they can get past their next opponent. Prior to their Week 7 doubleheader with the Mets, the Dodgers rocked the league with a blockbuster trade. It was a move that sent Greg Tyler to the Royals for Jordan Robles, and it was nothing short of perfection. In his debut, Robles took the carpet against the Mets and retired all 15 batters he faced for the league's ninth perfect game. Not to be outdone, Johnny Costa won his seventh and Cade 12 to keep pace with Miguel Rath and Torres for a share of the league lead in wins and distance himself from the pack with 97 strikeouts on the season. At the plate, Anthony Didio has put the team on his back and continues to get big hits in big spots. With Gerard Fitzgerald back for the stretch run, the Dodgers are locked and loaded for a run at the cup. The Yankees are a team of streaks. Early on, they lost five in a row. They then salvaged their season with a five-game winning streak but now they have dropped their last three. Their streaky nature has a lot to do with pitching above their head, while at the same time batting below their weight. With a series looming against the Astros, they should get back to 500. If they can use that series to get their bats going, they could sneak in with the sixth seed. Every time the Mets get it going, they seem to lull themselves into a devastating sweep. They have the pitching with a shutdown ace in Rich Gallad, a better than average number two in Nick Gallo, and everyone else on the team can get outs if needed. At the plate, they haven't put up the big numbers we expected, but they can all hit. With the toughest schedule the rest of the way, they could find themselves out of the playoff race before the end of August, but they may catch a break week eight when they take on the Mariners. After an easy win in a rain makeup game against the Astros, the Mariners' good fortune continued as they took on the low-powered Brewers offense. In a game where both starters traded zeros, the Brewers had the advantage on bases but Sean Ryan saved the day with his two-out walk-off home run to right. In the second game, they would start waiver wire pickup Chris Caruso, and not only did he look good on the carpet, he impressed at the plate with a pair of home runs. In the end, it wouldn't be enough as the Mariners dropped their fourth game of the season. With Scott Fleaser possibly on the shelf for the rest of the way due to injury, it could be a very rocky road for the Mariners down the stretch. After 13 straight losses, the Expos have also lost their mojo and it shows. Week seven, they played like a team that was eliminated from the playoffs, and after the first game with the Braves, that is exactly what happened. With some winnable games left on their schedule, they will only be playing for pride. If 
they can get their minds right, maybe they can play spoiler. After a July where they homered late to take down the Expos, and homered late to split their series with the Mariners, the Brewers still control their playoff destiny. Kyle Von Schlesingen continues to mow the opposition down, but the key to the Brewers' success or failure will be if they can get a little more out of their number two. Nick Squitieri took the carpet week seven and looked great in the first, but got roughed up after a few innings. Another concern for the Brewers, they will be without all their pitchers week eight, and that's good news for the Royals. The Royals stunned the Wiffle world with an early July win against the Braves. A week later, they shocked us again when they traded their ace Jordan Robles to the Dodgers. Freddy Gonzalez has taken over the ace duties and looked like he had a win against the D-backs until he ran out of gas in the fifth. Though the rookie squad is only 4-10, they aren't out of it yet. If they run the table or go 7-1 down the stretch, they still could find their way into the playoffs. Here's a look at the standings with just eight games left in the regular season. That's all for now. Join us next time as we look back at what should be an August to remember on the next episode of This Month in Wiffle Ball.